Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. It's English Digest, and it is our news digest for today. And we're talking about things that go on on the internet. More specifically, we're talking about bullying that goes on on the internet, especially through various platforms, I guess, like Instagram. And maybe Facebook and stuff like that, but I guess there's some kind of、uh, machine learning software that's trying to put a stop to this. Yeah, it's like having a machine act as some sort of control filter, maybe like a parent or a teacher, to make sure bad words aren't used and people aren't threatened online, which is terrible. I know a lot of people、uh, get into that online. I think that's horrible. You know, sometimes people don't use their real names when they're on social media platforms, so they feel freer to say really rude and mean things, which is wrong. So we're going to talk about how this machine actually is a learning machine, which is kind of creepy, really. But、uh, as we always do, we're going to read through the news story first. Bullying has been a thorn in the side of internet users and companies since the technology's inception. However, Instagram is looking to change that via the technological wonder of machine learning. For several years, the platform has been trying to transform its environment and become the nicest place on the web. In order to do that, the platform's programmers are employing cutting-edge tools to block offensive content. The machine learning algorithm looks for attacks on a person's appearance or character, as well as threats to their well-being or health in photos. An example of this might be split-screen photos, where a person is compared in an unfavorable way to something else. Instagram already uses a tool that targets comments and captions, which are text-based. However, It's only just now rolling out the same feature for evaluating the content of the pictures themselves. When these programs flag subject matter as potentially offensive, the content is sent to a human team for review. This team has the final say as to whether or not to remove the flagged content. This proactive approach to preventing bullying is also being used by other social media platforms. Facebook, Instagram's parent company, is another popular site among young people. Understanding its fear of influence, Facebook has partnered with the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence to create the Facebook Bullying Prevention Hub. The hub offers valuable information for teenagers, parents, and educators on how to halt or prevent bullying behavior both online and offline. These influential giants are doing their part to make the internet a little bit kinder. Thanks to them, it may soon be easier than ever to scroll through our feeds in peace and harmony. Okay, guys, we're going to be talking about a very popular topic in this lesson today, and that's bullying. If you bully somebody, you're somebody who has. More power or strength, and you use that power or strength to hurt other people who aren't as strong as you are. You might use that power to frighten other kids. We had a bully when I was in third grade, and she was a girl, and she used to scare me to death. She would always threaten to hit me, or actually, I was nice to her. I didn't get threatened very often, but she would threaten other boys or girls. She was very strong. If they didn't give her something she wanted or do what she wanted, she would say, "I'm going to beat you up after school." We've had bullies around forever. This isn't something new. People talk about it today as if it's a new phenomenon. The only thing that's new about bullies is that they're now bullying people online. As you know, that's how people communicate these days. But when we were growing up, of course, Tom and I had bullies in our school too. We certainly did, and of course, if you see a bully in action, of course, everybody knows who that person is. But online, you can bully people, and people won't really know who you are. So I suppose that's the reason why so many people bully other people because they know they can get away with it. 
Whereas maybe the principal will call you into the office if、uh, he or she has heard you've been picking on somebody、mm-hmm. or something like that. So indeed, this has become a problem on the internet these days. And so here we've got Instagram, and they've got some new software, a new computer program that's trying to stop this. It's trying to keep bullying off Instagram by using this machine learning software. Let's find out what this is all about. Here in the first paragraph, it says, "Bullying has been a thorn in the side of internet users and companies since the technology's inception." So, a thorn is usually like a piece of wood or something. It's from a plant, and if you're not careful, it can stick in your skin and it can hurt. And it usually stays there, and it's kind of hard to remove. So, if you have a thorn in your side, that just means it's something that bothers you, but it's almost impossible to get rid of it. Sometimes we'll use the phrase to talk about someone who really irritates us, or bothers us.、Oh, we can't stand him. Oh, he's a thorn in my side, which means oh, he really drives you nuts. Well, bullying has been a thorn in the side of internet users and companies, just because of what Tom said. A lot of people sign up for accounts and do not use their real names. And so it's easy to say whatever you want and be as rude and mean as you want, if you're not using your own name. If you're using your own name, you tend to behave a little better. Except people will sometimes go after celebrities and say mean things to them because they feel like you know I can, you know they're rich and famous. It won't matter, but it does. So it's a thorn in the side of internet users to have to put up with bullying, and this has been happening since. The technology's inception. Inception just means beginning. From the very, very beginning, they've always had this problem. However, Instagram, which is the program that you post photos, which is very fun to follow people on Instagram, they're looking to change that via the technological wonder of machine learning. When you see those two words, machine learning, you can automatically think of. Artificial intelligence or AI that we see out there a lot. Machines are actually learning as they run. It's kind of a scary thing. Technological just means related to technology or things that are used in our daily lives. It seems like technology is all around us. So, if you're talking about technology, you're probably talking about computer technology for the most part. There are a lot of、uh, types of different. Technical equipment that people can use, but technology itself is usually the application of anything that is a maybe an industrial process or a computer process that makes something go faster, speeds it up, or is able to reach more people at the same time. Technological here is an adjective, though, so via the technological wonder of machine learning, and of course, AI is all about computers and machines. Yep, technological here is serving as an adjective to modify the word wonder, a wonder of technology. You could also say, which of course is the internet and Instagram and stuff like that. So of course it wants to change all this bullying by using machine learning or machine learning software. Now, for several years, the platform has been trying to transform its environment, trying to change its environment, and become the nicest place. On the web, this is the platform, of course, the、uh, Instagram program. I don't have it myself. I have Facebook, and then I stopped at Twitter and Instagram. That's just too much. I do not want to live on my smartphone like so many people do. I drew the line there, but、uh, this is one platform that is quite popular, and I guess their intention since its inception has been to make it a really nice place, really friendly, and not have all that bullying. Yeah, when it first came out, it wasn't owned by Facebook, and that was one of the reasons why I started using it. I refused to even use Facebook anymore. Twitter's pretty mean too, but Instagram just seemed like, oh, I'll post pictures of my family, and we can share them together. You're also your account is protected; other people can't see those photos unless you invite them to. You can also see exactly who they're following. They can see who you're following. You can follow famous people or maybe just people in your circle of friends and family. So they wanted this environment, and we'll often call those social media platforms an environment to be the nicest place on the web. 
Fortunately, it gets meaner and meaner. But in order to do that, the platforms programmers—those are the guys, the computer programmers who put together all of the hidden code that makes that program run—they're employing cutting-edge tools to block offensive content. So, cutting edge means the very latest in technology. So, anytime you see that, they're going to use a hyphen between cutting and edge, and it turns into an adjective. Cutting edge technology or here are tools, and they're wanting to block offensive content. Offensive here is a word that means something that really bothers someone.、Uh, maybe you're used to hearing people use offensive language, which is swearing. A lot of parents try not to swear around their kids because they're kind of young. So anything that's offensive would be rude, using bad language, maybe vulgar, or using language that refers to you know violence or sex. Anything that would not be appropriate for say a ten year old is probably offensive. <laughs> Indeed,、uh, for example, I could say, "Hey, the mean things you said about me at the meeting were very offensive," or you could say, "I took offense at what you said at the meeting." Or it hurt、me. my feelings. You hurt my feelings. Yes. Now I'm going to have to go see a psychologist <laughs> and sue you for hurting my feelings,、mm. and you'll have to go to jail and stuff like that. But、uh, these are yes, cutting edge tools, top of the line tools,、mm -hmm. the most advanced tools, which of course is referring to software here. And I guess that brings us up to the midway point in today's lesson. But please stay tuned. We'll be right back to continue with our lesson. Here comes our Chinese teacher. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny. 今天我们要看的是第二单元。好，今天要看新闻。那新闻呢？内容跟大家现在常常使用的社群网站媒体有关系。如果你有用 Instagram， 你有用 Facebook， 你有用 Twitter。大家想一想，这上面呢，其实有一个问题，就是跟霸凌有关。现在可能有一个办法，可以让这些霸凌呢，至少受到一点管制。好，我们来看看这个文章的内容，就提到 machine learning software。我们知道 machine learning 讲的就是机器学习。那什么叫机器学习？基本上它就是一种。人工的智慧，那透过这种 software 这样子的软体呢，咦，也许可以达到阻挡的目的。这篇新闻的开头就说到，其实呢 ，bullying 也就是霸凌，基本上呢是网络使用者心里头的一根刺。哎，看到。A thorn in the side. 这个片语呢，跟中文的用法很像，就好像你腰间长着一根刺一样。意思就是大家所讨厌的、不喜欢的一种眼中钉。所以呢，现在 Instagram 它就计划要利用透过这种科技的帮助来改变。这边有一个片语，他说到 Instagram is looking to。当你说 Is looking to do something. 意思就是说，打算准备，哎，计划要做什么事。好，那我们知道，在我们 social media 盛行以来这么多年了，好像呢，大家都会想说，要改变霸凌事件这样子的事情。那注意到，在时态上，因为他这边用 for several years， 表示有一段期间，从以前到现在，因此。当你用这样子的时间概念的话，在英文里面，我们时态常会用完成式 ，has been trying to。这个当然有加了进行，也是说它不但完成，还加进行，也就是一直以来呢，都试着想要去做改变。好，注意到 for several years 有几年，这数年以来，后面的时态用完成式。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, let's continue with our lesson. Now, again, we're talking about. Machine learning software that's trying to stop bullying on Instagram, and the machine learning algorithm looks for attacks on a person's appearance or a character 
as well as threats to their well-being or health in photos. So, of course, people post photographs on Instagram, also videos, and this is a special computer formula, an algorithm that does look for certain things on the pictures on Instagram. It looks for attacks on a person's appearance, which would be like, "Oh, you look so ugly. You're so fat. There, you've got so many zits on your face. Your ears are too long. You need to get your hair cut. Stuff like that. Those would be attacks on a person's appearance. They might be attacking their character, like calling them stupid or so." Thing, and also they would have threats to their well-being or health, which would be like actually threatening to hurt somebody. If I see you, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to hit you in the face as hard as I can. Stuff like that. Those would be examples of threats to their well-being, which is like、uh, you know how well they are getting through life. And of course,、uh, all these things are happening in photographs on Instagram. That's right. So an example of this. Is in the next sentence. It says it might be a split screen photo that you're looking at, where one person is compared in an unfavorable way to something else or someone else. Split、mm-hmm. means to be cut in half or at、right. least divided in some way.、Sure. Sometimes, if you go to lunch and you forget your lunch money, your friend might offer to split his sandwich with you, so you eat. A little bit of it, and he'll eat a little bit of it. So these are split screens. So the screen is divided down the middle. That's what they're talking about. There's one website that、uh, is kind of fun. I don't think they do it to be mean, but they show two, usually two women wearing the same designer dress, and the question is who wore it better, which is always kind of fun to see how one person which shoes she picked to wear it with, or. If she chose to use the belt or not use the belt, it's kind of fun, just in a fashion way. But sometimes people will take pictures of, say, a politician. Like I remember Hillary Clinton was being compared. At least the coat she was wearing was being compared to a toaster. Okay.、And、they were both horrible, but it was kind of funny. I don't think she took offense. She probably laughed because the coat she had picked. To wear to a speech was pretty ugly. Yeah, I think anyway, I remember that. You remember that? Yeah. Yeah. I think there's also another example、what? of a picture of Donald Trump on the left side of the screen, and on the right side is a picture of an orangutan. Oh, how、there's、about the people... Cheetos? The the orange Cheetos that we eat. Yeah, I don't、He's、know. He's often that one. compared to Cheetos as well. Okay,、yeah. I haven't heard that. Maybe I'll look <laughs> that up. Just do a search on Google: Donald Trump Cheetos. The bad tan, the、uh, bad hair. Bad hair. Yeah, I guess、uh, he's universally、mm. believed to have a horrible haircut there. Yes. But again, maybe the algorithm would look for attacks on a person's character, or their appearance, stuff like that. And of course, we've got those split-screen photos, and they're compared in an unfavorable way. Unfavorable basically means it's just not approving of something. As for example, for unfavorable here would be, hey, I read an unfavorable review of that movie, so、Uh-oh. I'm not going to go see it. Yeah. Okay, so let's continue here. Instagram already uses a tool that targets comments and captions. You know, probably searches for nasty words and things、mm-hmm. like that, stupid, fat, etc., etc. It looks for those, and the captions, of course, are the words that are under a picture. Here's me at Disney World in Florida last year. That would be a caption, and of course, they are text-based, which means they look for words. Basically, that's、uh, pretty easy to do. Yeah, that's the easy part of an algorithm, but they use it quite frequently on Facebook for sure. That's how people get banned for certain things. Now it says, however, it's only just now rolling out the same feature for evaluating the content of the pictures themselves. So they started with the words, which are much easier to search for than, say, a photo or a picture. But we know that、uh, Amazon and Facebook both have a really good. Software system to identify faces, which I know the cops are using the Amazon software themselves already. But Facebook does it. You know, they'll ask you if you want to name who the people are, or they'll guess who the people are in your picture that you just posted. I never tell them. Don't give them anything. Anyway, that is a more difficult way to identify a bullying than just words that are mean. So, if you roll something out, guys, it means a company has produced some new product or maybe a service, and they're introducing it to the company. They're rolling out something, so they want to roll out the same feature for evaluating the content of the pictures themselves. If you evaluate something, you look at it, you make judgments about it, whether it's good or bad. Of course, 
every semester. At the end of the semester, we usually have a test where we're evaluated based on not just our test scores, but on our participation in class and how good we are, how obedient we are as students. We're always being evaluated by our bosses at work as well. Yep, that's the verb there to evaluate, and the noun would be evaluation. Like you might get a work evaluation if you start a job at a new company. Maybe they'll give you that after you work there for three months. A job evaluation. They'll evaluate your performance, and this、uh, software algorithm will evaluate the content of the pictures themselves. And when these programs flag subject matter as potentially offensive, the content is sent to a human team for review. So it flags it. It basically identifies this as being offensive. The subject matter would be what the picture is of, and potentially offensive means it has the strong likelihood of being offensive in the future. It has the capacity to do this. So yes, this picture could be seen as offensive. Well, then the content is sent to a human team for review. We've found out though the past year that these review teams and algorithms aren't completely neutral. So depending on what you think and what you believe, you may be banned when others who are doing things you think are worse may not be banned. So it's going to be interesting to see how that continues to move forward, and how these social media platforms will be accountable in some ways as to who they ban and who they let on. So this human team it has the final say as to whether or not to remove the flagged content. Any of us on any social media platform can flag or report content we think is offensive. That's how you flag something. You bring it to someone's attention, and then that human review team—not the machine, but real people—will sit down and decide whether they want to ban someone or take something down, remove content from their platform entirely. To have the final say means you get the final vote. Of course, in a family, sometimes you get to,、uh, you know, talk about what vacation you want to take, where you want to go. Who gets the final say? Well, that would probably be your parents and not the kids. Indeed. Now, here in the next paragraph, it says this proactive approach to preventing bullying is also being used by other social media platforms. Proactive just means you're taking the initiative yourself. You're not waiting for things to be bad in the future. You're stopping it ahead of time, and they're using it on other social media platforms like Facebook, which is Instagram's parent company. Facebook is another popular site among young people. Actually, I've heard that more older people prefer Facebook and younger. People prefer Instagram, but still, lots of people use Facebook, and they're trying this there as well. In understanding its sphere of influence, Facebook has partnered with the Yale Center for Emotional Intelligence. To create the Facebook Bullying Prevention Hub, so they understand how influential Facebook is, its sphere of influence, its range of influence. So they're getting together with this other organization at Yale University, and they're creating something called the Facebook Bullying Prevention Hub. Yeah, we've talked about hubs before in the past. I know airlines have hubs where their planes will fly into a centrally or located city or a really big city, and Then you'll switch planes and go from there to your final destination. This is kind of the same thing. Information's flowing into the central place, and that's where they're handling bullying. We've had a lot of kids commit suicide in the last year or so who have been bullied online, and I think that's really what they're trying to attack. Not so much the adults, but the kids who are so young. The hub offers valuable information for teenagers, parents, and educators on how to halt. Which means stop or prevent bullying behavior, both online and offline. Which just means away from the internet, away from the computer or smartphones. Indeed, and these influential giants are doing their part to make the internet a little bit kinder. The giants here are, of course, referring to these big platforms: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc., etc. And of course, they are influential. They influence or affect a lot of people. People learn things from them and stuff like that. And of course, they want to make the internet really nice here. And thanks to them, it may soon be easier than ever to scroll through our feeds in peace. 
And harmony. Harmony's like、uh, when things get along together, right? Yeah, unless it's music, and then you put two notes together, or two or more, and they sound good together. That's harmony. But harmony here just means no one's fighting, everyone's getting along, you're agreeing, and we hope that that's eventually what happens to most of these social media platforms. But I'm not going to hold my breath, which means I don't think it's going to happen. Right now, we're going to listen one more time to our Chinese teacher. 好，我们继续来看这篇新闻。新闻里面我们说到了机器学习这种的科技呢，其实是可以帮忙我们做好事。这里就提到说，他要怎么做，而且目前的问题是什么？基本上呢，它是有一个方式的。就拿照片来说，可能机器它就会侦测到这样子的照片的形式是用。Split screen photos. 这个意思就表示它是分画面的，两者并列的。好，我们用到了一个所谓的复合形容词 split screen。那我们来看看下面，他又提到说，其实 Instagram 它已经有一种工具，它的锁定方式是用 text based， 也就是用文字为主的这种评论说明，然后呢锁定它。因为这也可能会造成霸凌的现象。不过现在呢，它不但有文字的，它也用图片的来评估。那我们现在这里已经看到了文章内容里用到了所谓的复合形容词有好几个。在第一段里面，大家看到那个 cutting edge， 这个代表的是尖端的；而之前这一段提到的 split screen， 还有现在的 text based， 这都是属于复合形容词。善用复合形容词可以让你的文字很活泼。好，那我们来看看下面又继续说了。因此，像这样子的城市，他做了标记之后，他知道这些这样子的做法可能会造成反感。好，机器做完还要靠人，他就会把它发送给这个一个团队，这、就是真正用人的方式、人工的方式来做复审。那这样就会知道说，到底这个被标记的内容是。好还是不好？是不是应该要删除？等等。好，这边有一个偏语，他提到说，这个团队呢，他们有一个最终的决定权，用到了 has the final say。我们知道 say 它可以当名词，当你对一个人说 ，now you can have your say， 意思就是说，好，我们可以听听你的说法，可以换你说话了。所以。当说这个 team， 它有最终的决定权，也是用这个片语 has the final say。好，最后这一段呢，就提到说，其实这种方式是一种主动防治霸凌的方法。那我们看到 approach 这个字 ，approach 它基本上就是方式、方法。它有时候呢，用起来其实跟 way 很像。那你说这是一个做什么事情的方法 ？Approach to， 注意到后面的 to， 其实它有时候是一个不定词的形式，但有时候如果是指通往解决什么的方式，你的 to 是介系词，所以后面这边的 preventing 就变成了 ing。好，我们再来看下面，就继续说。当然，这种方式它其实也被其他的媒体一起使用，而且透过像耶鲁大学他们的情绪智能中心合作之下，其实可以帮家长、帮年轻人、帮教育工作者提供很好的一些遏制、防止霸凌的重要资讯。好，今天的节目就讲解到这里，我们下次见。That's it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us, and please make sure to join us again next time, where we are not going to bully you at all. From all of us here at English Digest, I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Bye. Bye.